greetings. My name is Mr. William J. McLean III. I've been in the educational arena for over 30 years. And through that time of experience, privilege, and opportunity, I've had the privilege to sit among students from many walks of life. And through that time period, I've had a chance to hear great thoughts and minds of our future. Despite the cliche that they are our future, it's literally true. Please be aware that the very students, the children that we have dealt with and experienced will be the ones who make the decisions for our future. The class that we're doing, and this is second leg of our video presentation, is intro to speech. Normally an intro to a speech class, there is lessons in terminology, presentation in front of audiences, and how do you hold your presence in front of a person. But our commentative end of our class, our conclusion deals with a video presentation of speeches and thoughts that came from topics that our students chose. Topics that are important to them. And why is that important? Because of what they think and what they feel is important will probably be the blueprint for our future. So important for us to put an ear to the ground and hear what they have to say. So as we sit back and listen attentively, let's hear what our future has to say and what's important to them. Topics range from sexual abuse and to just simply how a classroom format affects them. And without further ado, let's put our ear to the ground and pay attention to what our students have to say. Undocumented immigrants enter the United States aware of the various obstacles that will stand in their way as they seek a better future for themselves and or their families. Immigrant mi immigrants migrate to new countries hoping for better opportunities that their homeland could not offer. But unfortunately, once here, they are faced with constant worrying and fear of being caught. Many undocumented immigrants and enrolled students are afraid to send as well as attend school. These families can legally send their children to school regardless of immigration status, but they still have every right to be concerned. According to an article by U.S. News titled All Children Have a Right to Learn says, quote, a 19-year-old Osang New York high school student was taken into custody on the day of his prom. And quote, a 13-year-old girl whose father was handcuffed and taken away by immigration and custom enforcement during their routine ride to school, end quote. Such actions have been causing a difficult learning environment. The mental, emotional, and physical outcomes are noticeable and impact how children behave in classrooms. The children of undocumented immigrants can benefit this country with different languages by making people feel united and helping those who feel left out fit in. Without appropriate English language training, these children are largely destined for academic failure. And so, according to ncsl.org, Hispanic youth ages 16 through 24 had a 27 percent dropout rate compared to 11 percent for black non-Hispanic youth and 7 percent for white non-Hispanic youth and 4 percent for Asian Pacific Islander youth. These children deserve to be given the attention and resources they require to excel in the environment their parents work so hard to settle on. All in all, with all the difficulties undocumented workers face just to get their children to where they are now, they deserve to attend a school that will provide the required tools an immigrant student needs to succeed. When it comes to standardized tests, it does not show your intelligence, only how well you are a test taking. Some people are great test takers, which further proves their intelligence, while some lack thereof when it comes to testing, simply because their lack of patience and anxiety. Sophia Ushrov, a student from St. Pittsburgh College, had a great take on this stating that there are many factors that can impact a student's test scores in a negative way, including stress, lack of language skills, and a lack of needs accommodations. These things can impact students so much that they give up simply or stop trying to get the right answers for the test. Many students fail standardized tests because they did not have the option of learning it or they were not experienced enough in that field of learning. Standardized tests are not made for people of all races. Many cannot relate to most things that are on this test, especially when it comes to language arts. Sophia Ushroff stated that standardized tests cannot measure intelligence effectively if the student does not understand the question, 
because of their language barrier. If the student cannot properly comprehend what the test is asking because to them this is a foreign language, then how can you expect them to successfully complete the test? All in all, intelligence should not be measured on how you take a test. These tests do not improve your skills in any subject. They only hold you back. Fear is something everyone must manage no matter what. Fear is the ability to identify danger and make, make you aware of what can happen and what will happen. Children mainly experience fear of bodily pain, natural disasters, the dark, and harm from animals. Fear has been known for the motivation of fear and anxiety. The loss of control and the inability of making and coping a coping mechanism. These fears can be debilitated and prevent people from living, learning from the past about what can happen. What can protect one in dangerous situation makes people ca ca capable of doing many things that one wouldn't typically be able to do or willing to respond to, to the threat. Human beings are born, with fe are born with fears, which also is a survival extinct. According to the article, Human Development, as humans grow in their lives, they tend to grow connections with people, and these bonds become a greater value to a person. And losing these bonds is the biggest fear of many people. Fear is also a response to, med to medical health conditions such as anxiety disorders, pain attacks, phobias, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Fear is overcome by strength and courage. Fears only affects us when we are afraid to face our fears. All in all, fears are difficult to deal with, but it's most importantly to face them because if you go through life not facing your fears and just letting them eat you up inside, you'll be a person of fear. Rates of sexual violence against youth aged 12 to 18 are extremely high. Experiencing sexual violence as a child makes it more likely the survivor will experience re-victimization in adulthood. According to a 2003 National Institute of Justice report states that three out of four adults who have been sexually assaulted were victimized by someone they knew well. A Bureau of Justice Statistics report also shows that 1.6% of children between the ages of 12 through 17 were victims of sexual assault. And the number is constantly growing. The, we need to focus on this problem and make sure it doesn't happen again. Unfortunately, at least 15 million females alone have been raped. According to the Natural Violence Against Women survey, 54% of females surveyed were younger than the age of 18 when, when they were sexually assaulted. 32.7 were sexually assaulted between the ages of 12 and 17. A study in South Dakota, the frequency of date rape among high school girls ranged from 11.8% to 14.9%. And yet, tragically, another study, 15% of high school participants reported experiencing sexual violence in their dating relationships. Thankfully, there are countless ways to protect yourself against sexual violence. An important one is partying. Almost 90% of sexual assault cases occur on college campuses. Each one explained how the victim had too much to drink and was exposed to drugs. Carry around pepper spray, whistles, tasers, and anything you can do to protect yourself. Make sure you remember these steps. It could save you in the future if need be. Students in a small class have the time and chance not to be bullied, less fights, more peace, and more education. A teacher in a Texas school stated when her class was only filled with 15 students, quote, these positive effects of a small class are strongest for elementary school students. We begin to notice the improvement within the students. End quote. While students are in school, they should always feel safe. But in this generation, it is not that. Unfortunately, the positive effects of a smaller class which carries the same rules would not benefit across populations and states. One of the most common refutes against smaller classes is financial problems. Districts claim that they cannot afford to decrease the size of classrooms because it would be too expensive and they do not have the funds to do so. It is also expensive when students leave public schools to go to a private one. Two of the top five reasons parents choose a private school is for smaller classes and more individual attention to their child. 
The student's performance depends on the crowd they are with. Reducing the class size is a matter of education policy with students, teachers, and policymakers. Fortunately, the pros of having a smaller size class would be each student is being noticed. Sadly, it is easy for students to hide in a larger class, and most students will not receive their education. Another would be understanding within the classroom. The students may feel more comfortable talking in small groups of students. The class will have a chance to be quieter because focus is the key.